What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to use the best stair extension for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked a ton about the Instant Architecture Suite. Um, this is basically a tool set from Valley Architects with a number of different uh, architectural extensions um, that do different things, right? You can get these individually or you can get the whole thing for $118 a year. That's like 10 bucks a month, basically. Um, but e even if you get these individually, you can get instant stair and you can get instant fence and railing and you can use this to create amazing stairs and railing. Now, I got a question in one of my course uh, live calls earlier this week about using this tool. So I thought I'd make a quick video just showing you the three different ways that you can create stairs with instant stair. We'll take a little bit of a look at creating the railings as well, um, just to kind of make this process a little bit less confusing. If you are looking for some kind of like personalized help for SketchUp, you can check out my course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But the first thing is when you install Instant Stair, you're gonna get a little window that looks like this or a little toolbar that looks like this. If you don't see it, you need to make sure you have that enabled, then just right click and go down to Instant Stair. And so you've really got three different ways you can create stairs inside of SketchUp. So the first way is very simple. You can just click on it and you can just pick a stair type. Now, if you've used uh, Chuck Valley's um, instant architecture tools before, you're probably pretty familiar with this window, but there's options in here to do presets, but you can also select different kinds of stairs from the drop down right here. So if you know what you're looking for, right, like a glass stair or whatever, you can just pick this right here, or you can do what I do, which is click on this little window right here in order to pop up kind of a visual so you can see what the different stairs are. But let's say we wanted to create a very simple stair. So we'll just go with this uh, standard stair right here. Um, it's actually called simple, but um, now that we've selected that, we can close this window and notice how you get this little icon that pops up right here that shows you the stair that you're editing. Now, if you were to just click on make stair right now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna just spit out a stair in this space. But before we do that, we wanna adjust the parameters. So you can click on this button right here to adjust the parameters. One thing to note about this is anytime you see this little icon right here, you can pick different styles for the stair, right? So if we wanted to, we could create a stair that not only goes just straight like this, but also um, is stacked or turns or really whatever we're looking for right here. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna create this simple stair. So when we do this, we can set things like the width of the stair. And so one cool thing about this is when you click in here like this, what it's gonna do is it's going to indicate to you what the parameter that you're changing um, is going to be changing in the stair overall. So you can see a little image showing you that, okay, when we set the width right here, so say we want it to be four feet wide, you can see that it's setting the width of the stair. The overall height is just gonna be the height from the bottom to the top on the back side right here. You can also set maximum riser height in here. So if you don't want your risers to be taller than say eight inches, you can type in a value of eight inches right here. And so what this is gonna do is this is going to go through and it's going to use your calculations um, in order to set the number of risers in here. So for example, you can set um, an overall total length. Um, you can also have um, something where you set treads instead. So say you want a 12 inch tread, instead of telling it, I want this to be 15 feet long, I can tell it I want each tread to be one foot. So in this case, we're just going to go with 15 feet long right here. Um, but basically what this is going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to calculate um, the different things about the stair in order to create that stair. Now there's an option down below for railing lines. There are other options in here as well. But if you select the railing lines, that's going to generate lines that instant fence can actually generate stair rails along. So once we've done this, right, and we'll go ahead and tell this we want an overall height of like 12 feet right here. We're gonna click on make stair. So when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a stair just like this. And if you were to draw a line, you can see how the overall length right here is 15 feet. The overall height is going to be 12 feet. Now, one of the things that was cool about that is when you generate that stair, and this is gonna keep all of those presets that you had in here, um, but say that you wanted a landing at the top, you could click on the option for yes, and you could add maybe like a three foot landing or something like that. So just a flat piece at the top of the stair. So notice how when I click in here and do this, this has generated that stair right here. 
Okay, so now we've got these railing lines in here, which I'm not gonna worry too much about for right now. Uh, we can talk about that in a minute. What you can do with this initial setup is you can pick all of these different stairs, right? And I'm just gonna pick a couple just so you can kind of see them. So for example, if we bring in like a stacked stair right here, you can set the different heights of the different stacks, other things like that in order to create these more complex stairs. Um, one of the cool things about this is this also has the ability to create spiraling stairs so stairs that go in more of a spiral either from a central point or kind of like further out like this and one cool thing about that is when you make that stair right so we're gonna click on make stair right here um, what that's going to do if you select whoops I forgot to do it if you select the option for the railing lines right here so when I click on make stair like this if I select the option for railing lines I've got lines in here that are automatically kind of set up and ready for us to create railings with those so I can use that instant um, so you can then use instant fence and railing in order to create like a glass rail or something like that and so if we go in and pick one of these railing types and we probably don't want ones with the internal pickets right now you just want something simple um, just for this example but if we make that railing along here, it's gonna generate a rail that kind of falls, follows along that you could apply a glass material to. Now, one thing to note about this is it's a lot easier to generate railings that go on these kind of like upraised portions right here. Instead of trying to get them to sit on the individual steps, you can definitely do it. That might even be a separate video, but um, just know that you can do that. There's just some playing around with it that's required. But anyway, that's kind of the preset stairs. So next up, you've got the stair from alignment. And so the stair from alignment is really cool because it's just kind of simple. And so in this case, for example, say that you had, you wanted to, you need to go up eight feet and you needed your stair to be maybe like eight feet out or something like that. So you need to create a stair like this. It's a little bit steep, but what you can do is you can just draw the line in here. And then this gives you the ability along that line in order to generate a stair. So this one's pretty simple. Um, what you can do is you can just pick your stair. So say you want like a deck railing or, or deck stair or something like that. So what you can do is you can pick your deck stair. And then in this case, I'm going to not do my maximum riser. And I'm gonna use the length by the line length rather than a tread. And I'll go ahead and generate those railing lines just so I have them. But if I make this stair, notice what this is gonna do is this is going to create a stair based on that sloped line that I have. So in this situation, say that I didn't like the way that this looked, it's very easy for me to say, okay, what if this was 15 feet right here? So we'll just draw a line. Um, probably the best way is to draw a line up and then draw the line across like this. I'll erase these out. But now, if I run this, this is probably going to be give me a stair that isn't very steep at all. Whoops. But notice how it'll do that same thing. And you can make adjustments to the way this stair is created as well. And so this is probably the easiest way to generate a stair. One of the things that I really liked about this is you can also use it to create like a sight stair. So say that we've got something like this. So I'm just going to draw just like a simple surface real quick. So something like this, we're going to go ahead and reverse these faces. Then I'm going to use sandbox tools in order to make this bigger or taller. So I'm just going to generate kind of a hill right here like this. But say that you've got a hill right here and you want to stare from this point to maybe like this point right here. What you can do is you can draw on that surface right here, you can pick this object and there's stairs in here. So if we pick one, um, you could pick one like a sight stair. And so the sight stair, what that's gonna do is that's going to generate walls along the side like this. So when we click on this and we make this stair, what it's gonna do is it's gonna generate a stair that has walls that kind of go down into the site like this. And then once we're done with that, and wow, I did not draw that straight at all. But once we're done with that, what I would do, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to soften these edges up a little bit, just like this, um, is I would probably take that site and I would do an intersect faces with model right here. And so when I do that, I could go in and I could delete out these faces, right? So once I've kind of deleted out these faces, and sometimes toggling that hidden geometry on can be helpful in a situation like this. But when I do that, now if I come in here and take a look at this, we might go to a top-down view, parallel projection, 
God, I wish the sandbox, when it created this, notice how the blue axis faces down for some reason. I'm just gonna swap this axis real quick. That's gonna be good enough. But now if we go into a top-down view right here, I might toggle X-ray mode on so that I can see this. But I can erase out this extra geometry in here like this. We'll call that good enough for right now just because this isn't a cleanup video. But see how we're able to generate this site stair really easily because these walls just kind of go down and through the site. So if you're ever generating site walls, that's actually a really good tool for that. All right, so this final option gives you more control over the shapes that you can create, but it also uh, can be a little bit finicky depending on the shapes that you're trying to create. So basically the way this works is you can draw like a flat plan view of your stair um, and then you can select a landing or an edge um, and then tell it to generate the stair based on that two-dimensional footprint which is super valuable if you have shapes like this one or like this one um, where you have stairs that are going to go up that are kind of an abnormal shape that you couldn't create with the presets over here and so the way that this works is if you go into a plan view right here what you need to do is you need to pick up all of these faces so I'm just doing a shift click in order to pick up the faces and then you need to pick up the line on one riser. So it's gonna be this line right here. Um, if you select anything else, you'll get an error message, right? If I come in here and select all of this, try to run it, it's gonna give me an error message. So a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll do a right to left selection and then I'll use selection toys to select only the faces and then I'll do a shift click in order to select this edge. But then when you run this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take your input and you can pick different stair types, you know, kind of whatever you want in situations like this, but say that we wanted to generate um, maybe, we'll go with this stair right here, um, just the concrete treads. And you could make adjustments to this if you wanted to, like your overall height. So say I want my overall height to be like eight feet, I can type this in here, but we're gonna click on make stair like this, and it's gonna generate a stair based on the inputs that you have selected in here. Now, there's some things about like the way that it creates the landing and everything like that that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to in your inputs, but that's generally how this is gonna work. And so where this gets really powerful is when you've got these kind of like non-standard shapes for your stairs, like this. So if I select this one, for example, I can pick the option for something with the uh, walls. So something like this exterior fan stair. And then I can run this. And again, we'll leave our height to eight feet and we'll click on make stair. That's gonna generate a stair based on that footprint that you drew right here. So it's kind of drawing those walls in here for you, which is super, super powerful. And so it'll work with things like curved edges as well, but you have to be a little bit careful with these. So if I select all of this, right click and select only faces, then I'm going to pick up these edges right here and run this. And for this one, we'll say that this stair is only going to go up like six feet. So something like this. Um, and you can add railing lines and things too, by the way. But if I make that stair, notice how it's going to put that in here. And I don't think I did eight feet. I think I did eight or six feet. I think I did six inches. So we're going to try this again. Yeah, six feet, there we go. Um, and we'll have the railing lines. There we go, and it'll generate that stair. Now, in this case, I probably don't wanna use the site wall um, option just because that's going to give me those walls and they're gonna be kind of jammed in around the corner. That's not really how you would build this. So in this situation, we would probably select a stair that's more like one of the standard stairs. So something like, we'll just go with this simple stair right here, we'll click on make stair and it's gonna generate that stair just like this. So super easy to create these custom shapes. Um, this also works with things like spirals. So if I select this, right click, select only my faces and then pick this in like this, and make the stair. Notice how it's gonna give me a spiral stair. Now I've got this too tall in here obviously, but you get the idea um, of what this can create. Now, one thing that was kind of throwing me off when I was trying to work on this the other night is this doesn't seem to work, unless I'm doing something wrong, it doesn't seem to work um, with 90 degree turns. So if I do a select only faces and then pick this up, it's gonna give me an error. And I think it's because when this turns, it's not able to use that same 
algorithm. Um, now, if I do this with this one right here, do a select only faces, it can handle the 45 degree turn. So we're gonna change our overall height to seven feet right here, just so it's not super steep. But it'll take that 45 degree turn and it'll push pull um, each one of these pieces up like this just fine. But when you get to the 90 degree, it's not really working. So the workaround I was using is I would just generate this first stair right here. So select only faces. We'll figure out how tall we want that to go. So in this case, we want this to go maybe like eight feet right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make the stair. Uh, there's no option in here for landings when you do it this way, so you'll have to make those manually. We're gonna click on make stair. So we'll generate the first stair here, and then I'll go ahead and I'll draw this landing. And then I'll take these, and I'll just copy them up like this. So something like this, um, and then I can take those and I can generate a height based on this. So say that I want these to go up, um, another three feet or something like that, you can go ahead and you can select it this way. And you can just tell it that you want this to have an overall height of three feet. You can click on make stair and it'll make your second stair right there. So if you want it to go 90, that's the workaround I've found. If anybody knows a better way of doing that, go ahead and let me know, I'd love to hear about it. But I've not seen a way to make these go, um, I've not seen a way to make these go the full 90 degrees with this last option right here. All right, so that should get you familiar with the three different ways of creating stairs in Instant Stair. If you want me to go further into this, I definitely can, um, but that should be enough to kind of get you started. Now, if you want some personalized help on SketchUp, that kind of thing, you can check out my course at thesketchupessentials.com slash course for more information there. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.